as a Christians, as Christians, we all take uh, this book, Bible, seriously. Especially out of, uh, you know, we in this Bible, we have uh, 66 little books within it. And for me, you know, this whole Bible is the uh, Word of God. This is very important to me. For my life, um, I think this is, uh, this is the most important thing in my life. But out of uh, all the pages, all the words we, we find this in, in this holy book, especially I value the words of Jesus, the teachings of Jesus. And many of you may have seen some Bibles in which the words of Jesus are printed in red, right? Probably some, some of you may have copies of those Bibles. I think, it, you know, this is a, this is a wonderful, uh, there, there, there's a history in it. You know, there was a man uh, from New York he was a German immigrant and he came to this country as a young child in the mid 19th century and his name was uh, Louis Klopsch, it's a German name. I, I don't know how to say his last name, K-L-O-P-S-C-H. <laughs> how do you say that? <laughs> Klopsch, what, what, you know. Anyway, he, you know, it says one day, well, he was uh, doing this uh, printing business, you know. He owns uh, this uh, printing business and then he was uh, probably printing he had uh, this contract with the, this newspaper company and then he was uh, printing this newspaper for this company. And then one day, you know, he was going through something and then his eye fell on this particular passage, Luke 22, verse 20, where Jesus shares uh, the Last Supper with the, his disciples and, you know, whenever we do communion, we read that passage. And Jesus said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. And when he, when he saw that passage, he said, his eye just fell on. And then he just couldn't move, he couldn't move his eye from it. And... And he thought that since Jesus' blood was red, printing not just those words, but all the words of Jesus in red in the Bible would be a great idea. So after having some consultation with uh, one of the ministers, one of the famous preachers uh, of his time, he did. And it is said that, so he printed out very initial edition of 60,000 copies of that red Bible, red letter Bible, was sold out immediately. And then words of a praise came from all over the world. The first printing happened in 1901. And President Roosevelt even invited him to White House for dinner. <laughs> so he became very famous and then, you know, this particular um, printing, uh, this particular edition of the Bible was very well known to many people, you know, all over the world. And this man later did a lot of a charity work. He made a lot of money, of course. And then he dedicated his life to spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ until he died. What a wonderful story. You know, one man's idea, you know, the inspira inspiration 
one man had somehow, some way, you know, some mysterious way, you know, made an impact. This is a wonderful story. And so, you know, I do not have uh, that red uh, letter Bible with me today, but I, you know, I, you know, I, I, I don't have it here, but I, I have seen many times. Probably the words we heard from Luke's gospel today, that's one of those, uh, you know, red edition, I probably, you know, print in red. And when you look through those words of Jesus in the New Testament, of course, you know, they are most important words that we, um, that we um, um, consider, that we uh, find in the Bible. They are the words of Jesus. They are the words of God. They are the words we need to uh, live by. But here's one thing. Even though we all love Jesus and his teachings, we know some of his teachings are really hard for us to take in. You know, some of his teachings are too hard to swallow, right? Don't you think? Especially the the one we heard today. What did it say? Sell your possessions and then give it to the poor? I mean, how many of you today, you know, after this church, you're going to go home and then sell all your property, sell your possession, and then, okay, I'm, you know, okay, I'm doing it today, and then I'm going to give it to the poor. And I'll be, I'll be homeless tomorrow. <laughs> how many of you will do that? No way, you say? <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's right. It is hard. It is really a challenge, you know? And then, you know, when you read the Bible, that's not the only one. There are many, many teachings. There are many, many teachings Jesus gave us. And, you know, most of them are really hard to, hard to um, embrace, you know, right away. And then... I, I was um, kind of intrigued by this idea, and then I just went online the other day, and then I just typed it, you know, I just Googled. It said, the most difficult, uh, the most difficult scripture uh, lessons in the Bible. I just typed it online, on the internet. And then, oh boy, there are a bunch of uh, web pages. You know, one web page said, the, most, the five most challenging teachings of Jesus. There's another one, the hard uh, sayings of Jesus. There's another one called, the 14 most challenging radical, do we really have to do teachings of Jesus? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, everybody knows, you know, Jesus' teachings are radical, and, you know, we cannot really literally follow. Now, let me give you some examples uh, (laughs) um, from one of these uh, web pages. Well, we all know this, you know. One, um, in Luke Chapter 6, verse 27 and 28, Jesus says, you know, love your, nanny, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. <laughs> wow. You gonna, are you willing to do good to uh, those who are really hate, I mean, hating you and then, you know, He even said, bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Wow. In verse 29, Jesus continues to say, if somebody slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. Wow. If somebody takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. 
the other day, you know, Marcus, uh, he's our friend, uh, he, you know, Marcus and Hinata, they were here several years ago, and so when my f family and I were visiting Brazil, we stayed with them uh, several days. It's a wonderful young Christian couple. And Marcus uh, put this uh, webpage on Facebook, and this is what's happening in Rio, you know, right before our Olympics. So these young people were just bicycling on the street and then there were people walking this way and then they snatched their bags and then snatched away this hand. <laughs> Crazy, right? And then would you be, you know, going there and then, okay, when they snatch away your sunglasses, okay, take this one also. Would you do that? <laughs> That's what Jesus is saying. This is amazing. Two, in Matthew 6, 24, Jesus says, we have to choose God or money. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other. You cannot serve God and money together. We may not serve money but many times you know we tend to follow money rather than God don't we number three you must deny yourself take up your cross daily and follow me Jesus said if anyone would no for whoever, for whoever will save his life or will lose, lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. So these are only a few examples. Especially the one today, the one we heard. Sell your possessions and give it to the poor. Wow. Wow. As a preacher, you know, I also have a hard time. Whenever I run into this, uh, run into this, these passages, sometimes many preachers, oh, you know, no, we're not gonna <laughs> pass <laughs> because we know what's gonna happen. People will not like it. It's too much to take in, you know. So there's always temptation to not preach on those texts. One time at my previous church, one of the key members of that congregation came up to me saying at the church, Pastor, I want to tell you something. <laughs> you know, I work 12 hours a day and six days a week. You know, whenever I come to church, I want to hear the goodness. I want to hear the goodness. The reason I, want, I come to church every Sunday is because I want to hear some words of hope, some words of encouragement. Please let me hear the goodness instead of all those words. <laughs> wow. <laughs> all those words of Jesus. <laughs> I don't remember what I said to him then. <laughs> but let me tell you. Let me tell you what the goodness is. The goodness is the every, day, every, the every word Jesus is uh, giving us. That's goodness. Amen? Amen. The every word we find the Bible in the Bible is goodness. <laughs> Especially the words of Jesus. Even though... Even though they are hard to swallow. Even though, you know, they are not something I could do. Even though they are not something I could practice in my life. They are the goodness. Because they are true. Whatever Jesus is teaching is a goodness. Even though they are hard to accept. They are given to us by God to feed on, to live by. 
And they are needed for us to reach the kingdom of God. Amen? And then we are not alone when Jesus is giving us this teaching. He is not really telling us to do, saying, oh, well, this is the word you have to live by and then you're on your own. He's not saying that. When Jesus is giving us this uh, instruction, he is always promising that I am going to be with you. I am going to help you. God is with you. You know, that's the bottom line. God is always helping us. So our right response would be with God's help. Oh God, I will do that. I will try my best. God help me to live by those words. So in today's uh, gospel lesson, you know, I think that this is a this is a reason why Jesus is giving his disciples these hard lessons. He says, seek his kingdom and do not be afraid for your father is pleased to give you the kingdom of heaven. So God is not God is not only um, walking with us in this life he is pleased to give us this promise the promise of a kingdom the promise of the kingdom of heaven and then you know in this particular text Jesus doesn't say oh father God will give you the kingdom he said he is delighted he is pleased. He is happy. He is, uh, he cannot resist. You know, he is overjoyed. Our Father God has pleasure. He is full of joy to give us this gift of uh, heaven to those who try their best to follow the teachings of Jesus. Amen? So here's the bottom line of my faith. And I hope this is the core message of the Bible. Because there is a God. Because there is eternal life. Because there is a kingdom of heaven. Because there is a heaven. Because there is a God's eternal promise. Because Jesus rose from the dead. Because he is sitting right next to his father right now. You and I, who are followers of Jesus Christ, will be there too soon. You and I will be there very soon. Very soon. It could be tomorrow. It could be day after tomorrow. I'm just shocked to hear that story. And because... Uh, some of the people, well, probably, who is that? Medicapa was helping, right? And Sesha was helping this lady, your neighbor. And then you always said that, you know, she's just a wonderful lady. But you are telling us she passed away. That's amazing. I just cannot believe this. Again, again, our life is fragile. Our time is limited here. You know, who knows? It could be just me tomorrow. And this is what we need to know. Because there is the promise of God, of heaven. Because there is a promise of our eternal life. You and I can do what seems to be impossible. You and I could try our best to do what seems to be impossible. That is, you and I try to love those who hate us. 
you and I try to forgive, love, even pray for those who are not kind to us. You and I can choose God over money. You and I could turn the other cheek when they try to slap here like this. <laughs> you and I could try to make a difference in this world. The writer of a book of Hebrews today, uh, he says, we are all aliens and strangers. And some of the tra translations said, we are all immigrants. Wow, what a strong word. We are all immigrants on earth here. Why? It doesn't matter whether you were born here. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter where you, are, you came from another country. We are all strangers here. We are all immigrants. This is not our home. Our home is in heaven, for which we are all longing. And the heaven is our ultimate goal the ultimate goal of our journey. Over the years, we lost our many, many friends and you know, our members. I'm sure they are all watching us. We think of our parents, our spouses, who are gone before us. They are with the Lord. And we are going to be there soon. In this country, immigrants suffer a lot because the culture is different, the language is different, everything is different. As an immigrant myself, I know what it is. I'm still, after 25 years, <laughs> I'm still working on my language. <laughs> I'm still working on many things. I'm an, I'm an immigrant. It is hard. But know this. We are all immigrants. No matter what, no matter who. As immigrants here on earth, everybody has to learn a different language, a common language. That is the language of uh, Jesus, the language of love, the language of hospitality, the language of forgiveness, the language of peace. If we want to get, if we want to get a reward when we reach our home, eternal home, life is full of challenges. So yesterday, when we went to this shelter, you know, we sit down with the people there, homeless people, and then we eat also. Sure, you know, we talk, and just, just, just like we do here during fellowship. And this is kind of my experience. You know, when I get to talk to the people there, homeless people at the shelter, of course, you know, they are, they are there because of a reason, you know, the, uh, the, the situation, you know, they didn't really like. But in many cases, the reason why they are there is, of course, they broke, you know, they lost job or whatever. But one aspect of it is their relationship with their family members got broken. You know, this guy yesterday told me, oh, you know, I have, um, you know, my siblings and brothers and sisters, all that, but I never talked to them again. So in other words, the relationship became sour, and there's no connection. That's why they ended up, you know, where they are. The scripture says, 
Faith is confidence in what we hope for, and assurance about what we do not see. That's what we read、uh, in the Bible. But here's my own version. Faith is doing our best to endure, love, forgive, embrace, and serve one another in Jesus' love here in this world. Because of our assurance of God's blessings, not just here on earth, but also in heaven. So God is always helping us. God is walking with us when you and I try our best to live by the words of Jesus. Amen.